Welcome back to the second video of our Data Science Project series. Let's continue to work on the NBA Games project. In this video, we'll work on collecting the data necessary for the project. Hi everyone, I'm Justin. Welcome to Justin to Data, where data science materials are shared and made simpler for you. As you may recall in the previous video, I brainstormed and decided to work on a project to predict winners of NBA games. So where should we look for the data? We can certainly Google for an open data set. Let's try NBA games data. There you go. You can find it on Kaggle. Let's open the link. Let's scroll down a bit. And you can see that there's CSV files that we can download and use. But instead of that, I prefer a method where we can pull the data directly into Python so that when new games come in, I can easily update the data set. So let's try to Google NBA data Python. There you go. We can see that there's a package called NBA API in PyPy. Let's open it. It's an API client package to access the APIs for NBA.com. So we're lucky. We can use this package to grab data from NBA.com. It should be a lot easier than accessing its API directly. One thing that I like to look at before using a new package is the GitHub statistics. We can see that there's lots of activity, so it's an active package, so it should be good to use. All right, let's see how we can use it. We can read more about the documentation, but I'll just go through the things necessary for our project. Looking at the Use section, we can see that the first step is to install it, same as using any other Python packages. So let's copy this pip install command. We can either install it using a terminal, but I'll just do it in the Jupyter Notebook. Here I'm using the Jupyter Lab interface, and I already have a notebook called NBA Games Prediction. If you're not familiar with using Jupyter Lab or Basic Python, I have two courses that can help. One is this free Python crash course that covers a very basic Python knowledge. The other is this Python for Data Analysis with Projects course, which covers basic data analysis skills in Python. You can check them out in the description below. So continuing on our project, we can use the magic command percent sign and paste the pip install command here. Let's run it. Mine was already installed, so it's really fast, but yours might take a bit more time. Now we're ready to use it. The best way to start using a new package is going to its documentation and see what examples they have. So going back to the doc, under the usage examples, we see two links, basic usage and Jupyter Notebooks. Since we're using Jupyter Notebooks, let's click on that. Now we can see a GitHub page with some notebook examples. We want to grab games data, so let's click on this Finding Games Notebook. We can read the notes here. To find a single game, use the Lead Game Finder class. And you can get data across the NBA, WNBA, G League, and International Ball. Their example is to find all games for the team called Celtics. But we want the data for all the teams. So let's look at this code from this cell. We can copy it to our notebook to try it out. I'll take out this import statement to run it first. Now we imported from the NBA API stats endpoints League Game Finder. Then we can use it to query for games. Instead of setting the team ID as a Celtics ID, we want the recent NBA games data. So we want to grab the games from a certain date. How can we do that? Let's see if there are any parameters that can help. I'll press Shift Tab to read the documentation of Lee Game Finder. You can see that there's many available parameters. After reading through them, we can see that we need to set this date from nullable to select the start date for the games. Let's do date from nullable first. We can try to make it equal to start date, say 2020 slash January 31st. The rest of the code is just grabbing the data and printing the head. So let's run this. Hmm, it doesn't work. I guess we need to dig deeper into this. I already know the solution to this issue, 
but I want to show you how I came up with it. So I first tried to go to the home directory of the package. If we scroll down, we can find the README documentation where a lot of times you can find useful information. Then I read through it and found that there's this endpoints documentation. Let's open it. And we know that we're using the endpoint called League Game Finder. So let's search for it and open it. This is a doc for this endpoint. We can search for the parameter we're interested in using. Date from. There it is. There's a link so we can follow it to see if there's more details. Unfortunately, there's no available information. So this documentation isn't too helpful. So I turn back to Google. Say we can search for NBA API date from. And I was lucky to find somebody asked about the same issue we had. I think it's this one. So he apparently tried to pass different formats of dates and none of them worked. And later he mentioned that this format worked. So month, date, then year. Let's go back and try it out. So if I switch to the format two and run it, we can see it works. This is great. Besides the date from, there's one more parameter we need to set. As you may recall, the Finding Games endpoint returns all games across NBA, WNBA, G League, and International Ball. But we only want to see the NBA games. So we need to filter for only the NBA games. Let's press Shift Tab again. By looking through this document again, we can find this parameter, League ID Nullable, that might help. So what should we set it? We'll have to go to the documentation again. We already have this page of the League Game Finder endpoint opened. So let's search for the parameter League ID and click the link. This time it has documentation for us. It says if we want NBA, we need to set it as a value of 00. zero. Let's go back to the notebook and try it out. It works. Now we have a pandas data frame called games and it stores NBA games data from 2020, January 31st. Let's take a closer look at the data set we have. This is important for us to see if we got all the data we need and also think about whether we need to transform it or not. First, we'll need a target for our prediction, which is a game result. It looks like this column of WL. When it's a W, it's a win. When it's an L, it's a loss. And of course, we have other information about the game, such as season ID, team ID, team abbreviation, team name, game ID, game date, matchup, and some data about the scores or points. You might have noticed that each record in this dataset stores one team's data in one game. That means, for example, this row of data is only about the team Memphis Grizzlies within the game with ID 00420000144 here. But we all know that one NBA game is always played by one team against another, so two teams in total. There must be another record with the same game ID for the other team. So there it is. It records within the same game the stats for the team Utah Jazz. So we have to read both of these two rows to get a complete view of this game. This is a game with ID 00420000144 on the date 2021, May 31st. It's played between Team Memphis Grizzly and Team Utah Jazz. It's played at Memphis since a matchup column says that. So the game was hosted by the Memphis Grizzlies. This is important information since a home or hosting team tends to have an advantage over the visiting team. In terms of the result, the Utah Jazz has W or 1 with total points of 120, while the team Memphis Grizzlies lost with the total points 113. Another important column is this plus minus column. It shows how many points the team won or lost by, so it can be used to measure how well the team did relatively. For example, since the total points are 120 versus 113, 120 minus 113 is seven. So the winning team has a plus minus column showing positive seven. 
you won the game by seven number of points, while the losing team has negative seven points here. This is probably the most important feature to predict the winner of a game, since we can measure how good the team is compared to others based on their past history of plus minus points. This will be the main feature that I'll be using. So now I've got everything I need to build a simple prediction model for the game winner. In the next video, we'll clean and explore the dataset to get it ready for modeling. Stay tuned. Did you learn something new in this video? If so, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Just click the subscribe button below this video right now. If you're interested in more data science tutorials and courses, please head over to our website, Justin to Data. Thank you and see you in the next video.